Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to the video where we will be discussing past year question for the year of 2022-2023. In this video, we're going to discuss question number two involving chapter two atomic structure. In question A, sketch an energy level diagram to show the first five lines involved when electrons fall between the energy level in the Lyman series. Okay, so that's the first part of the question lah. Okay, so what is an energy level diagram? Energy level diagram is where your y-axis is your energy. Okay, and then your x-axis is your energy level. So what is energy level? Energy level is your N lah. Uh, or we call it as our shell. But usually for 2.1, for atomic model, we, we usually label it label it as energy level okay so for this one what we're going to draw is actually we have to show a different energy level so we're going to start with n is equal to one so there's there's none of n equal to zero lah we must start with n equal to one so when we draw it we become n equal to one okay and then for this one we have to draw n equal to two n equal to three n equal to four and equal to 5 and such okay until infinity okay but then remember uh, this one for the axis only you have to label the y as the energy uh, and for the n axis you have to label each one of this one lah okay and then for each of the line make sure the gap is getting nearer to each other okay so how i'm gonna draw it okay so this is the drawing again from one until six uh, the species is getting nearer to each other lah. If you want to un continue until 8, until 7, until 9, it's fine. Just make sure that it's getting nearer to each other. Okay, so this is the axis itself. But then the question asks for the first five lines involved when electrons fall in the Lyman series. Again, uh, this one you have to memorize for each series what is the ground state. To memorize the ground state for each level, Again, uh, you can use any anecdotes, but um, what I like to use is either lima baby pergi beli pampas or leman balik pasar break putus. So, what does it mean here is that leman, the first one, the ground state is equal to 1, the second one, balik, sec, uh, and is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in this question, it says about the Lyman series. So, our ground state must be n equal to 1 lah. This is our ground state. Okay, so again, this is when electrons fall between energy level. So, it means that the electron must fall n equal to 1. Okay, so it mentioned that first five lines. Okay, so first possibility is when. Okay, so uh, if you want to remember, first possibility untuk kita jatuh lah. Assume this is... um. Tingkat 1. So, first possibility, takkanlah daripada tingkat 3 turun 1. The first possibility adanya tingkat 2 dulu yang jatuh kepada um, tingkat 1 kita lah. So, I'm just going to label or I'm going to draw sebab ni. Sketch energy level diagram to show the first 5 lines. Okay, so the first n equal to 2 to n equal to 1. So, this is the first possibility, first line. Okay, second line, second possibility n equal to 3 falls to n equal to 1. First, second, the third line is from n equal to 4 to n equal to 1. The fourth possibility or the fourth line is when n equal to 5 to n equal to 1. And the fifth possibility is when n equal to 6 to n is equal to 1. So, that is the first five lines involved when electrons fall in the Lyman series. Again, the first line is when in when it will fall all into n, n equal to 1 but the first possibility is n equal to 2 second third fourth fifth so for example if you draw n equal to 7 or n equal to 8 it's fine so you don't have to draw any of the lines lah because the, only, the question only asks for the first five lines okay so that is for the Lyman series if the question asks for for example for balma balma our balik so it means that first possibility is 3 to 2, 4 to 2, 5 to 2, etc. Lah. Okay, but then the question asks for Lyman series. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is the determine the wavelength of the radiation that emits the highest frequencies for the series. Okay, so for the Lyman series, so it mentioned about the wavelength, about the frequency. So for the prosatomic model, there's a uh, formula that you need you need to memorize. It's not only about the lima baby pergi beli 
pampers or alignment balik pasal break putus these are all the formula that you need to memorize to do your calculation okay there are some of the value are the list of constant you can refer back to the list of constant for example your plan constant your speed of light okay and then your right bit constant lah okay so let's look back for the question determine the wavelength um of the radiation that emits the highest frequency okay so the frequency so if you look based on the formula where we have our frequency is this one delta e is equal to hv our frequency so the question asks for the highest frequency based on the uh, formula itself we can see that the highest frequency means that we have the highest delta e so what is the delta e delta e is is the energy difference or the energy produced when the electron falls from the higher energy level to a lower energy level so this is our delta e uh, this is all our delta e we have one two three four five that's five of our delta e so as we can see the highest difference the the biggest delta e is when n is equal to six to n equal to one uh, this one energy kita yang paling banyak lah so for example if you compare n equal to two a uh, fall to n equal to one is very small one value but the highest one in this case is when n equal to six fall to n equal to one okay so the question asks for uh, determine the wavelength of the radiation again the highest delta e is when n equal to 6 fall to n equal to 1 so the question asks about calculate the wavelength so up to you so for the wavelength is either you want to use delta e and then you find the wavelength or you can also use this value lah 1 over lambda okay so first i'm just i'm gonna show you both ways okay but first i'm gonna use this formula Delta E is equal to RH, our right bit constant. This one must be a constant value lah. Please refer to the uh, list of constant. This one is in Joule because this is delta E. Uh, 1 over initial. Initial ni is from the higher energy level lah. Again, the fall. So, maksudnya from a higher energy level to a lower one. So, final will be 1. The initial one will be equal to 6. Okay. So, when you have calculated and you have substituted all the values, you will get your delta E to be negative 2.12 exponent, negative 18 joule. Again, must be initial uh, from the high energy level to the, when we fall to the lower one. Lah. Okay, so you get your value to be negative. Negative shows that the energy is released. When the electron fall, energy is released in the form of light. Okay, but then again, the question asks for the wavelength. So, first is delta E. So, next you use delta E is, is equal to HC over lambda. So, what is H? H is a plan constant. C is your speed of light. Uh, when you substitute um, the value into delta E is equal to HC over lambda, you don't have to uh, include the negative and the negative sign. Okay, why? Because negative shows that the energy is released. The energy is being released. Okay, but then for this one, you don't have to show because your plan constant and your uh, speed of light is positive value. So your wavelength, again, this is a length. So length, there is no negative value lah. So you don't have to put the negative one. Okay, uh, so once you have calculated, then you will get your delta or your wavelength to be 9.38 exponent negative 8. Okay, again, the unit is meter. So, because this is wavelength, length kita, so it must be in meter lah. Unless the question did ask for in nanometer, then we have to change it. Okay, but then the question only asks, um, determine the wavelength, so we're just gonna accept it as it is lah. Okay, so this is the one way to find the wavelength. It's where you find your delta E, where the RH is, must be this value, 2.18 exponent negative 18 joule. Okay. And then you find your wavelength. Or also, you can also use this formula. But then, for this formula, um, the difference is that not only the RH will be different, you have to make sure this one, N1 minus N2. But this one, this one must be a smaller value than the N2. So, this is what it means. Okay, so if I've calculated it, what will be the answer? Just a correction, please make sure if you have paused the video, 
um actually from the previous one here i've mentioned that the rh is 1.097 exponent negative 7 it's supposed to be exponent 7 lah there's no negative only the value of 7 okay so for example the steps that i have shown is when we calculate the delta e and then we find um from the delta e h c over lambda if you want to use this one okay it's different not only about the rh the value is different this one initial is a bigger one bigger minus smaller number when you use one over wavelength the smaller minus the bigger number lah so for example as the calculator i've shown here on the left hand side uh, if i calculate it straight away then i will get the value to be 9.376 uh, 376 exponent negative 8 lah okay uh, so again you still will get the same answer but uh, in your exam you have to memorize so up to you either you want to memorize only this one or you want to memorize this one as well it's fine both you will get the same answer to be in this case 9.38 exponent negative 8 uh, negative 8 meter okay so that's the uh, solution for question a okay question b Atom X has proton number of 13. Determine the number of electron in an orbital with the quantum number L equal to 0. And draw the orbital of the valence electron with L equal to 1. Okay, so first what we have is the proton number. So first step is actually write down the electronic configuration. So for this one, you will get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. Okay, so we have 13 now. Okay, back to the question. So actually, there's two. First is determine the number of electron uh, when with the quantum number L is equal to zero. So that is the first question. So again, what is meant by L equal to zero? So when L is equal to zero, we have, uh, it means that the electron is in S orbital. If L equal to one, it means that it is in P orbital. And if L is equal to two, we get it to be the D orbital. So, since the question asks to determine the electrons when L is equal to 0, L equal to 0 means the electron in S orbital. We have S orbital here, 1S2, 2S2, 3S2. So, the number of electron when L equal to 0, our electron, the number of electron is 6. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. The second part, draw the orbitals of the valence electron with L equal to 1. So, what is the orbitals here? Okay, so orbitals. So, orbitals are the shape itself. Then, you have to draw in 3D too lah. Again, we have, we have spherical. We have apa lagi? Dumbbell. Uh, we have clover leaf. Uh, itu yang in 3D shape. Orbital ke, dia bagi tau shape. Itu yang 3D shape. We have to draw lah. Okay, call our orbital diagram. Orbital diagram is where we have here. 1S, uh, 2S, 2P. This is the orbital diagram. Okay, so the question asks, draw the orbital of the valence electron. So what is meant by valence electron? Valence is the outermost electron. Okay, so the outermost electron means that our highest end lah. Highest n. In this case, the highest n is n is equal to 3. Okay, the question asks, draw the orbitals of the valence with L equal to 1. So, it wants when n is equal to 3, L equal to 1. So, it means that this is our 3p orbital. So, as we can see, our 3p orbital, there's only 1. Okay, so for the drawing, so we need only 1 lah. Only one p orbital. So how to draw the shape? First, we have to draw the axis. Uh, we have our y, x, z. So actually, for your axis, the axis is interchangeable. If you want to write down here, y, x, z, it's fine lah. It's about three D again. Okay, again, draw the orbitals of the valence electron L equal to one, and we know that valence two n equal to three. So here, I'm just gonna label this is my three p. Okay. So, again, we have three choices, either X, uh, X, Y, Z. Up to you lah, any way you want to draw. So, for example, I want to draw here Y. Make sure it is shaded lah. When you draw it, again, dumbbell, draw it in terms of uh, shaded to show that it is in 3D. So, when you label here, you must draw 3P, Y. Okay. 
So again, even though here you mentioned draw the orbitals, but actually of the valence electron with L equal to 1, so 3P lah. If the question asks for valence electron, then can draw 3 as 3P. But then the question specifically mentioned L equal to 1. So because here 3P1, we only have one choice, so only one drawing is enough. If you want to draw more, you have to write down or. Okay. Because again, there's only one. Because you mentioned. Kenapa 3PY bukan 3PZ? Boleh juga 3PZ. It could be 3PZ. It could be 3PY. But we don't know. We do not know specifically which one. If you want to draw all. Then you have to do this symbol lah. Okay. So in this case. Contohnya you want to draw all. Uh, that's fine. Okay, jom draw all. Okay. So this part. I'll draw it in Z axis. So here it mentioned about 3PZ. Okay. Uh, so, if you want to draw, okay, there's another one possibility. Then you can draw another one lah, which is our 3PX. So, again, the question asks for the orbitals of the valence when L equal to 1. So, it must be 3P lah. Kalau dia minta valence je, valence electron, then 3S pun kena draw. But then, because this case, uh, for the 3P, we only have one electron. If you want to draw all, you have to show the all ni lah. It could be any of these three. Or you can only draw it once pun tak apa. Just make sure that you label it three. Because it could be 2P pun boleh juga kan. Uh, so you have to show lah. Is it a balance or 3P? And then the axis must be specific. Okay. So that's it for this video.